Usually, when a person murders their partner, they go on the run, and when they're finally caught, they claim self-defense. However, in today's case, 42-year-old Athena Lang shot her boyfriend four times, walked out of her trailer, and called the police. When the police arrived, she claimed that she thought her boyfriend was going to hurt her. So, what what happened this morning? Or what, matter of fact, take me back. Has there been any history of violence in the house or anything? Um, mostly, when Dan would get angry, he would just maybe like slap stuff throw stuff around mm -hmm. and and storm out um he liked to say that i had abandonment issues and maybe it's true but uh then he would leave to punish me um and then come back when i was ready to listen to him mm -hmm. um for self-defense to work, the suspect must be in fear for their life. When asked if her boyfriend had a history of violence towards her, Athena claims that the most he's ever done was break something or leave their home. This is not a great start for someone claiming self-defense. I don't... I don't... know... Um, what Daniel's problem was. Mm -hmm. Um... His mother would be the one to talk to. She's a, um, a counselor of some kind. But I think maybe Dan was schizophrenic. Um, he, um, he, he believed that he had been poisoned last year and from the things he said that I could look up online nothing was you know like okay that's completely you know not possible and I always thought if even half of the things he said were half true mm -hmm then he had every right to be paranoid. Um, but um, he thought, he thought a lot of things. He thought that there was this huge conspiracy um, about him, um, about Brazoria County, he, he, he thought that there was an AI um, that was um, like alive and, and it, it was like crazy fucking Battlestar Galactica bullshit. Um, mm. it, you know, um, I mean, there, <laughs> there was just so much and and mostly it was okay you know and i didn't i didn't realize it all at first but then i thought you know that i could i could help him you know um when uh, we moved to Las Vegas he, because he wanted to get away from here. Um, he got a job uh, doing uh, quality assurance testing, software testing. Um, and I uh, had gotten a job at Walmart and then I got really sick. And I, I didn't know at the time if it was Corona or what it was, but I was, I was really sick and I couldn't work. And he quit his job um, because of, of the whole, th I'm, I, it was just, anyway, so we, we wound up 
coming back to Brazoria County because that was the only, it, it was that or be homeless. Right. You know, and towards the end of our time in Vegas, he was, he, he wanted to go burn down a homeless encampment. He wanted to go burn down the bar across the street from where we lived. Um, and th there was, I mean, but there was nowhere else to go. So we came back here, and I I didn't have any money anymore. We we burned through everything that I had gotten out of my retirement accounts from the county. And I couldn't afford to buy him beer every day. Um, in Las Vegas, marijuana was legal. And, and that helped, I think, a lot that he could smoke and, and relax. Um, but he would also... Um, smoke meth once in a while mm -hmm. and he thought that I didn't know that, that that was what was going on but I'm not fucking stupid <laughs> you know when you don't sleep for three days it's kind of obvious but um the detective hears a very important piece of information her boyfriend was a meth addict and he would have meth induced psychotic episodes it's possible that he was going through one of these episodes and it ultimately led to the shooting. Or perhaps, Athena is also a meth addict and she was having her very own psychotic episode. But when we came back here, he, he didn't have any kind of release anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and he started to get more um, agitated, mm -hmm. I guess. Um, he decided he was gonna make, like, I don't know what you would call it, homemade wine, I guess. Um, since I couldn't, since, you know, we didn't have money for him to have alcohol, he was gonna do that. He um, he had just started that. He would started drinking it today. He, he had just started making it the other day, and today he started drinking it. Um, I guess I guess yesterday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then he he would he had gone out and found some plant that he had picked leaves off of um, that he was smoking. And I don't know what that was. It smelled bad though. Um, but that that made him squirrelier than usual. Um, but today he. When y'all got up this morning, what was the event of today? Okay, um, we got up. And my leg um, was still hurting me really bad from the night before. And I said, look, it's Saturday, it's hot outside. I just wanna sit in here, fold my cranes, maybe watch some cartoons or something. And he said, that sounds like a good idea. And so I went over to my grandmother's and I asked my mom for a pack of cigarettes. Um, but she was almost out. And so instead I made a trip up to Bucky's and I bought cigarettes and I got, a, you know, I have one of those big mugs. Mm -hmm. I got one of those big mugs full of iced tea. And, um, and a gallon of milk for my grandmother and I came back 
and um, my mom gave me a pack of cigarettes and I went back over to the trailer and I came in and as soon as uh, I got in and gave Dan a cigarette he said he was gonna go outside to do something and I, I don't remember what it was he had so much stuff going on he was digging hog traps in the woods and planting things and and who knows what but I had thought we were gonna spend the day inside and I was like fine whatever um, so he was drinking and smoking and then in the evening he came back in and he had this um, cream I guess he had made uh, with willow bark and he had got me to put it on my on my leg last night but it didn't help at all if anything I think it made it worse and so he's like it's I'm gonna put this on your leg and uh and I we had already talked about I didn't think it helped earlier in the day and he's like here it's time to put this on your leg and I'm like no and he got really angry and he was like, well, why not? And I said, I don't owe you an explanation. I don't want you to do it. And then, so he threw that into the kitchen area. And then um, I, um, I have a lot of practice at, um, just being really no affect um and and so I, w I just sat there and he he started going on about how um I was uh I was just sitting there and rotting and and I wouldn't take care of myself and I, I if I didn't um, if I wouldn't let him help me then he didn't want to hear about he didn't want to hear me complain about my leg because that hurt him because I wouldn't let him help me and I said, well, I, I don't think it, it's helping, to be honest. And The story takes an unexpected turn when Athena explains that her boyfriend no longer uses drugs because they don't have the money for them. Instead, he spends his days making and drinking homemade wine made from things he finds out in the woods. On the day the shooting took place, Athena's boyfriend had just come back from the woods with a cream made of tree bark. Athena's refusal to use the cream would ultimately lead to his death. Then he started actively trying to upset me because then if I got angry, then he could be the victim. Mm -hmm. um, because I, I would, I was unreasonable so he he said that um, about how I was um, a bad person and a bad mother and I had broken my children and all kinds of things and he was mad that I wouldn't show any emotion and he said, what can I do to get a rise out of you? And he picked up my iced tea and he said, how about this? And he opened it and he poured it down the drain. And I just looked at him and so he threw that, the cup. And then he says, oh, I know. And he grabbed my box for gummy crates that I had been working on. 
started crushing them and throwing them. And then he threw the box at me and I think it bounced off the wall and hit me in the head. I don't think he, he actually threw it in, in my head. I think it bounced because I was sitting there on the bed. And I, he threw some other things. He threw something and it hit my foot. I don't, I don't know what it was. And then he started, you know, pulling his shoes on and, and he's going to leave. And I told him not to ever come back. And he left. And I really, really hoped that he wouldn't come back. But he did. He crawls into bed next to me. And because I'm, I'm just sitting there kind of, um, I hadn't, and really got up and, and started cleaning up after him. Um, I've, I've had to do that before, once really bad when we were in Vegas. Um, but I, I, I had just like picked up my origami paper that and put it back in the box the the stuff I had folded and just you know dusted off where he had dumped the ashtray on the bed and stuff and um he so he came in and he um he like crawls up next to me and he's like give me a kiss and I'm like, no. And he starts like trying to, I guess, like hug me. And and I'm like, get off me. And he gets mad again and start yelling and saying um, how I'm a narcissist and a borderline and he says um what, what was it he said i don't i don't remember but he like he like shoved me like back while you were in the bed and it seems really important. I, I can't remember what it was he said. Oh, I remember. I told I told the woman when I when I called nine one one because I said I, I told you not to come back. And he said he was never going to leave me and that he was going to find out what it was that got under my skin and once he found out he was just going to keep crawling and crawling and make my life miserable every day until I woke up. That was what it was. Anyway, um, so he, he shoved me and then he like took his shirt off and when he did that, I got my gun out of my purse and I shot him, I shot him once and he said, 
Oh no, what have you done? But I didn't, I didn't see anything. Mm -hmm. I, I thought I had missed him or something because he put, he, he just stood there and, and he was fine. He just said, oh no, what have you done? And he started to take a step and I shot him. I don't know how many times I shot him. And he turned and he fell. And I kind of like kneeled on the bed. And he wasn't moving, but I heard him like make a noise. Mm -hmm. And then I got the phone and, and I called 911. After their argument, her boyfriend left for several hours, then returned to their home. The couple began arguing again, and at some point, Athena claims that she was shoved by her boyfriend. She then reached into her purse, pulled out her handgun, and fired the weapon at her boyfriend. This testimony leaves many questions unanswered. Was she in fear for her life? Was there a way for her to leave? The detective needs to answer these questions and more before he can decide if it really was self-defense. At what, at what point did you feel like he was fixing to do something to you to the point of you having a gun? Was that gun registered to you? Or yes, it, it was mine. I bought it. Dan shoved me around before um, the other day. Um, and, and usually it's not anything like to get I mean he just he, he doesn't he, he's never beat me mm -hmm. okay um but usually he would he would just he'd get mad and he'd like throw me and then storm off or whatever or or like shove me up against the wall or something and then storm off but Before, when he would throw things and break things, it would, it was never like he was throwing things at me. Right. All right. And then, tonight, yes, last night, yesterday, it was like, He was throwing things at me and then he had like grabbed me while I was in the bed and it wasn't like get away from me and now I'm gonna leave. It was like you stay there and now I'm gonna do something. You know? Mm -hmm. And you said when um, he came at you and you shot at him, at what point in your life did you feel like you were in fear? Did you think he was fixing to do something bad to you or it was just you had enough or what What made you go in your purse and retrieve your gun? What was the, the breaking point to going in your purse to get your gun? It was like this, this feeling that when he when when he shoved me but then he didn't leave and instead he took his shirt off and he 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 was like he was smiling you know and 
he started to come back at me. I just, I don't know. I don't know what he was going to do. <laughs> I might have been wrong. No, nobody said you done nothing wrong. I'm just, these are just the questions that I have to ask you so I can see through your eyes what was going on. And you said once he shoved you, you felt that, did you feel like something was going to happen next? Well, did you warn him to get back or anything? Or he just kept coming or he didn't believe you were going to do anything? I, I don't... He wasn't, he wasn't listening to me when, when I was telling him to, to leave and to, to not, to get off of me and to not, it was just like, this is it. You know, this is when I, I, I don't I don't know how to say Based on the testimony so far, it would appear that Athena was tired of dealing with her boyfriend and she was done with the emotional abuse. It seems that Athena just snapped and shot him because she realized she was never going to be able to get rid of him any other way. The other possibility is that he was acting so erratic that she was in fact scared for her life. One of the questions I need to ask you again is that when you said you shot at him and he stood there and looked at you and said, you did it, what did you do? What did you do? What, what have you done? What have you done? And then were you still on the bed? Yes. Okay. And then... When he, when he said that, what was his next reaction? He's, he didn't, he just, he, he stopped for a minute, for a second, like he paused and he, his, he said, what have you done? And then he started to take another step toward me. And, and, and I just, I shot him again. I, I don't know if I hit him the first time. At any time when he was coming towards you and you shot at him and he stopped. Did he ever turn around and try to run away from you? No. No. So there's no way possible that he could have got shot in the back or nothing. No. Like that. Okay. Okay. No, I I shot him and then he turned and fell face down. Another issue we see is that without warning, she just grabbed her gun and pulled the trigger. They were both on opposite sides of the room, so she could have aimed her gun at him and demanded he leave, or at least let her leave. At that point, if he attempted to attack her, then she could defend herself. No matter how much another person verbally assaults you, you are not allowed to just kill them. So there was two separate shots. It was the initial shot, right? I and then that's when he made the comment. And then you said he took another step towards you. And then I shot him again. And but I, I think I shot him. I think I shot him. I shot him two or three times. I, I, I shot more than once, but I don't know how many times I shot. Could you see where it was hitting him, maybe? And then once that happened, did he ever say anything else? No, I don't think so. Is this something that he, tonight, did he act like extremely unusual? Is this just common when he's like any other time? No, or? no, it was different. I don't, I don't know if it was whatever 
shit he was finding out in the woods and smoking or eating or whatever. Mm -hmm. Do you think if you had to do it all over again, would you have done the same thing? If this happened again and you had that option to squeeze the trigger and shoot and then shoot again, would you do the same thing again? I don't know. I don't know. When he asks her if she had to do it again, would she make the same decisions? Athena says she doesn't know. The answer the detective is looking for is yes, I would do it again. Because if I didn't, I would no longer be alive. When he got poisoned, mm -hmm. if he actually got poisoned now, that I... I've had it, but he said he did, and I believed him, but when we first started going out, it was he didn't know who had done it. It might have been these people, or it might have been those people, or whatever, but then now... It's, it's always like, no, it was definitely the white nationalists, or it was definitely his mother, or it was definitely his uncle and whatever warrior man movement thing. I, I don't know what, or, or, or it's a doomsday cult, or it's, but it's it's always something mm -hmm. you know and okay. give me just a minute and uh, I'll be right back okay <clears throat> you sure you don't want any water or anything <laughs> Kleenex? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're, we're just about finished up right now. I'm just going to get your Kleenex right quick. As of the making of this video, Athena was charged with murder and is currently awaiting trial. Based on the interview, it would appear that Athena was honest about what happened. If she had wanted to lie, she could have said that he physically assaulted her and she was in fear for her life. So, if we are to believe Athena, did she act in self-defense? Or did she snap after years of emotional abuse? I'd love to hear your thoughts on this case, so please share them in the comments below.